For many new divers, the anxiety of scuba diving comes from being able to breathe underwater. The sensation of being able to stay underwater and having to rely on equipment causes many people to freak out. For me, it wasn't breathing underwater or relying on gear which made me anxious. I was nervous of the ocean itself. As a child, it appeared to be dark and scary, but I knew there was more to it. At the ripe age of 20 years old, while going to college, I decided to make a leap of faith and push myself to learn more about the ocean, starting with scuba diving. This is when I met Matthew Houghton, a scuba instructor who was passionate about preserving the ocean and relaying that knowledge to his students. This led to a three-year adventure from early beginnings as an open water diver to being an assistant and eventually a career in teaching people how to dive. What you're about to see is the story of a friendship, uniquely bonded through the undersea world. The story of two passionate people looking for a way to give back, a way to teach others of what we're losing very fast. Story from when you were 10. I don't remember a story from when I was 10, dude. You don't remember a story from when you were 10? No, I don't remember a story from when I was 10. Why not? Because I've hit my head plenty of times since then. <laughs> you hit your head plenty of times since then? I've been through eight concussions. Eight? No, eight. That's bad. It's not bad. As you go out to complete your open water dives, next on the History Channel. There was always this store that was on the corner of the highway that I passed every day on the way home from work, and it had scuba diving and rifle range. It was kind of a weird combination, so uh, it was like a, it was adventure sports. And I always wanted to see what it looked like, so I went in there and I started walking around and looked around, saw the equipment, started talking to a guy named Mike Cody, who was my dive instructor and uh, became pretty good friends with Mike and got a good deal on the class and he took me scuba diving and from then on out I kind of fell in love with it. It was great. I remember as a kid going to the school library and looking at Jacques Cousteau books and there was a part of me that said wow that's really cool what is it like to breathe through a regulator? What is it like to, you know, go in the water deep and to see marine life and to experience um, another world, basically? It wasn't until I met a kid in school by the name of Tim Nagel, and I was at his house and I was reading a, mag a diving magazine while I was at his house. I was like, wow, you're a diver? And he um, told me about a store in Natick. They had a little, like, get-together once a year for people who wanted to try scuba. They called it the Try Scuba event. So I invited a good friend of mine, Jacob Lucarelli, to come with me to the Try Scuba event. That's when I knew there was something special going on. So I had a big knife, and I, I'm not supposed to tell you this, but I was slicing fish in half. And I was like, wow, catfish, he comes by, and he just fold in half. And it's like, oh, great. <laughs> I started to learn about the environment, and wanted to do something to, to help it out. So now I'm teaching against that. Kind of say, be nice to the fish. Just the feeling of being in another planet. It's like another, another world. There is no traffic. There is no people nagging on you. It becomes an experience that uh, you take back that that can't be duplicated. It can't be replaced. It's it's a bond, and 
I guess most relationships are formed through bonds or experiences. That's what brings people together closer. And it's, it's something that you take back with you into, I guess, what you would call a real world. And uh, it's an experience that nobody could ever know unless they experience it themselves. There's a lot of key factors that went into it. I was still going to school at the time when I first started doing this. Me being home and me wanting another activity to do, there was the fact that I really, really enjoyed the water and I wanted to get rid of my fear of the ocean that I had. You know, I was working a lot while I was going to school and that expendable money led me to have the opportunity and the money available to purchase gear. The date for my class got nearer and nearer and finally, my instructor-to-be decided he was not going to teach the class and that everything I had planned, my whole class, everything was going to be pushed off two more months. And I was saying there, it was the beginning of the summer of 2000, I said, man, I want to take this class. I want to get this class done. I want to not have to worry about it. I just need to take the class and get it done with. So I had an option to go down to the Rhode Island store and take the class down there. They had a built-in pool, they had a full facility, but I'd be topped by this complete hard ass. Of course, the hard ass ended up being Matt Houghton. And if I wouldn't learn how to dive, I wouldn't have met Tyler Purcell. The reason for teaching was, I guess, I guess it would have to start after I got out of the Army. Going up, I studied an outdoor rec program and it seemed like it was kind of an area where people just went and just blew off. It was, it was, it was like an easy elective and it wasn't, it wasn't really taken seriously. And spending a couple years up in Colorado, you get to really see the destruction that's really going on out there in our, in our, in our world on natural resources. I remember we went on a 21 day sea kayaking trip and we were coming up with New Year's resolutions as everybody does every year and they don't complete any of it. It's just a, it's a way of feeling good about yourself for just one day. And we went around in the circle, you know, I want to quit this, I want to quit that, I want to quit doing this, I want to quit doing this, you know, I want to, I want to be able to do this, 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 and this. And it finally got to me and I kind of turned and decided that <clears throat> I kind of wanted to stop being a hypocrite. I wanted to go out and actually educate, actually teach people of what we're losing and we're losing pretty fast. Taking somebody who's stressed out all the time, not really focused and determined on, on anything because they're just so stressed, and put them, give them a hobby, give them something to do outside. Have them intermingle, meet new people. I mean, diving is, is, a, is a sport that it doesn't matter whether you're 10 years old or whether you're 90 years old. You will bond with whoever you're with at that point in time. got confronted today uh, by a guy that you know just thought it was throw on a tank and go in the water that's what somebody told him and I, I turned around and I asked him I you know, it's like well would you just turn around and jump out of an airplane somebody handed you a parachute I mean, he had no idea that there were so many different things involved in diving there's so many different ways that pressure affects your body so many different ways that or things that can happen while you're down diving that you have to be prepared for. I don't know about anybody else, but I'd kind of like to come up every dive. 
with good memories as opposed to being flown to some decompression chamber off somewhere else and fighting off the bins. There was this real feeling I had that this was something that I really wanted to do. This was something I really enjoyed. After the open water dives, I immediately took the rescue class for SSI. And I spent the next six weekends diving and diving and diving, both Saturdays and Sundays. I bought all my equipment, like right away. I bought my tanks, I bought everything. So I had everything I needed to go diving with and I just went diving. Over the course of about a month and a half, um, I went diving every weekend with Matt. And eventually he started lightening up to me. April 28th, 2001, we were waiting for Matt because he's a lazy, yeah. So the air temperature is 50, less, 48. And we're about to go diving in Hathaway's Pond. And the water temperature in Hathaway's Pond is colder than I anticipated it to be. It took a while for Matt and I to get along pretty well. But after the class was over, he kind of was there for me. And we went diving a lot together, and there was this sense of friendship that was there that progressed over the course of the 2000 year. We, we, found, found, we found Tyler on the side of the road. <laughs> Ever since then, we haven't been able to get rid of him. <laughs> Matt doesn't like to stand still. He likes to move around constantly. So he decided he was going to start his own company called Straight Fly Excursions, and he was going to build a business model, and he was going to teach scuba diving independently from the shop with Naui. And he brought his Naui certs back up again, and he basically bought a truck, spent like eighty or ninety thousand dollars on gear, and put together this new company called Straight Fly and he hired me to do a video series for the company. So I sat down and did a, a, a long, you know, full half hour video on scuba diving in New England, and then a couple of short videos um, to try to tease and hint people in diving. We're going to start off by kind of introducing each other. Uh, we're going to be going through the whole class together, and that's, I, I, I still remember the people I went to my class with the first time. You know, it's, it's kind of kind of nervous. It's a new thing, but it's fun. It's a lot of fun. Today, we have the first class of Straight Fly. Excursions Incorporated just got their open water certification. Jeff, how do you feel about that? Is this Straight Fly's first official class? Yes, it is. God damn, I'm going to bring on the hose. <laughs> no, right. The classes I teach, it's not about just getting your certification and being pushed out the door. It's about a diving community. It's, it's developing a, a family of divers. Congratulations. <laughs> it's, it's about getting them together. I invite my past students along that, that went through the class and already done to come out and dive with us. How are you feel today? You're an open water certified scuba diver. You're great. <laughs> <laughs> then we have Kim here. Nice butt shot. There we go. All right. <laughs> it's not about customer product. It's 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 bringing people into into the diving community and following up on them and keeping them interested, and keeping the motivation and the drive going. I really had to put that piss in that wetsuit all day long. But I held it because I didn't want to get this nice rental wetsuit all urinated up. So I ran back at the fort. Jesus, one week is just going, going, going. Whew. Just think, this is only number one. The number two happens, you know, order of operations, pee first and poo. Because if I've gone through a class and they're not diving, and they don't dive anymore, maybe weekend Caribbean divers every one, once a year, 
I really haven't done my job. I really haven't built the interest. I really haven't haven't built the excitement for diving within them. So why do you like going and diving, Godfrey? Something to do. I did about, I'd say, 90 dives in uh, 2001, and um, about you know another 60 or so in, in 2000. So I had about 160 dives under my belt uh, by the end of 2001, which is pretty good for only about you know about a year and a half worth of diving in my entire life. I decided, you know, I was graduating from college in Emerson in 2002. And I decided that I was going to work with Matt and I wanted to be an instructor. So that opened up a whole new can of worms because A, I didn't have the money to go take the class. And B, uh, I had to convince Matt that I was a good enough pupil, a good enough person to work with him in the company. So there was the video, there was the stress of me working with Matt trying to figure out you know, whether or not it was something I really wanted to do. And I finally camped with enough money, went down to Florida, I went to Captain Slate's school down there and spent about a month, uh, it was like 20, 24 days total, and uh, got my Maui instructor certification, which was not a piece of cake at all. It was the hardest thing I'd ever done related to scuba diving ever. And it was fun, it was enjoyable, met a lot of cool people, and came back to Boston, started talking with Matt, and I started teaching right away. And for the entire summer of 2002, I taught four different classes and had an absolute blast. Because it, it's an exciting thing. And sometimes you sit there and you think, oh, you know, God, this is, you know, this can't get any worse throughout the week. And then, wow. You know, weekends like last weekend were just phenomenal. It was just an amazing weekend. And you just realize, once you drop your head below the water, below the surface, into another world, the magic just casts itself upon you. And life becomes complete, in my eyes. And on that note, since the camera's saying, you have no tape left,
end of 2000, the summer of 2002, in September, uh, no, in August, um, Matt told me that he wanted to sell the company to me, that he wanted to move to California, that he was, he was done teaching, he was tired of doing his own business, he wasn't making enough money, and I had one day to decide whether I was going to whether I was going to take straight fly or whether I was going to move away from home. I was still living at home. And Matt was going to move to California. My best friend Alexi was going to move to California. I said, you know what? I'm going to go along and move to California. So I took all my gear. I packed it up. I put it in the green bins. And I moved to Southern California. It's a gorgeous day outside. And I get to go diving today. There's all my diving crap, and I am ready to go. The fun of diving just disappeared to me. And ever since I moved here to Southern California, I really haven't been diving. But it's a different world. And I figured out what that different world is. I figured out that the reason why it's like this is because there is no mat. I'm the mat. And I need to go out and I need to do my own thing. You know, the reason why I started diving in the first place was to prove to myself that I really wasn't scared of the ocean. And to go to the absolute next level with something. Maybe the passion for diving is, is so huge, I'm gonna wait till the right circumstance, and then I'll get back into it again.